Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Uh, today I wanted to cover off a feature called WebDAV. Um, this is a feature that allows you to mount storage uh, from your QNAP uh, directly into your computer uh, in a native sort of way. So instead of having to use, uh, say, our file station application to copy files up and down, so you'd have to copy it down, work on it, then re-upload it to, to put it back to overwrite the old one, um, the way to do it in a more native way, so on a Mac within Finder or within Windows, you'd be using File Explorer where you can just double click a file, edit it. As soon as you hit save, it's, it's back in the, um, in, the, in the main location. Um, so it would work a little differently to how QSync works. So QSync that we already did a video on would sync the files down locally um, so that you have a local copy to work on and then they would sync back up. This is working on the files live. Now you can set this up so that it works um, when you're in the office, if you take your laptop home from the office and want to work uh, remotely, um, there's no changes to make. Your, your computer will just immediately know where it is. Obviously in the office, it is going to be much faster because it's LAN speeds uh, than if you are remote. Um, so it's built into every QNAP. So the easiest thing to do is to just enable it is if we go into the control panel, um, it's down here hidden under the web server option because it's part of the web server and then there's the web dab option here. So I've already got it enabled on this one. So the options you've got is to turn it on or off. You get then get to pick which permission set you're going to use. So this is uh, where you say which users can and can't access what um, within the NAS via web dab. Um, my general recommendation is to leave it on the default of the shared folder permission because then you don't have to manage a separate permission set uh, whether somebody is in the office or out the office um, using WebDAV or not. It's the same rules um, whether they're in the office or not. So I leave it on the shared folder permission. WebDAV permission just effectively lets you create a completely separate user list just for WebDAV if you want to. Um, you can also then um, choose to enable a dedicated port. I do. Um, I don't want it to decide a different port automatically. I want to use specific ports that I've set. Um, so here what I've got is ports 5000 and 5001. So 5001 is for HTTPS, which is the one I'll use today. But there's also the HTTP port there as well if you didn't want to use HTTPS. So we just have to remember what these are. And we get a clue of how to connect written right here. So you've just got to change... Um, everything between the brackets effectively to um, what that means for your NAS. So the first step I did is I created a MyQNAP Cloud um, name for this NAS. Uh, so I've just created something called WebDAV Demo. So if we look here, we've got an internet address of WebDAV Demo. Um, I did also create a SSL certificate using the free Let's Encrypt option. So I've got an SSL certificate enabled for the HTTPS connections. Uh, specifically for webdabdemo.mycunapcloud.com. So that's another step that I've done uh, on this NAS to allow me to have access. Um, another step that's quite important is to set a static IP address for your NAS ideally. Uh, so what I've done here, if I scroll down to the interface, I've set a static IP address on this NAS of 192.168.50.80. Now that's important because I need that to be port forwarded through my firewall. So I basically will need to port forward ports 5000 and 5001 through to the LAN IP address of this QNAP. So that's ports 5000, 5001 to 192.168.50.80. Um, I can't show you how to do that really because everybody's firewall is different. Um, using my setup here, this is the rule that I've created in my firewall. Uh, so I've created a rule called WebDAV. Um, it's allowed to come from anywhere, and I've done port 5000 to 5001, and they're going to a specific IP address of my QNAP that I've set up there. So I've saved that rule, and that's now active in my setup so that I can now access WebDAV either in the office or outside the office. Um, so an easy way to, um, to, to set this up on a Mac I'll cover first, then we'll go to Windows, is if you just open up um, find us so that if you've got to find a window open like this you can click the go option at the top and if you scroll to the very bottom there is a connect to server option now this connect to server option will apply from what we're going to type in here so when we want to type in um, the information to connect so we'll close that one down so we just leave this open we're basically going to follow this naming rule here so by default it's put in AFP something or other there so what we're going to do is change that so we're going to do HTTPS, because I'm going to use the HTTPS function. 
colon forward slash forward slash. And now I need to put in the NAS domain name or IP address. So in the case of this one, it was webdavdemo.myqnapcloud.com. And now I need to do a colon for the port. So if I do colon, and I, as I'm going to use HTTPS, I'm going to type in 5001. And now it wants the folder path. So I'm just going to use it with the standard public folder that's already created by default on the QNAP. So I've typed that whole path in there. Um, so as so long as you've got no spelling mistakes, when you hit connect, that should mount that folder. I've got to authenticate, of course. Uh, so here, if I go admin and my NAS admin password, I would recommend not using admin. I would recommend setting up separate usernames. Um, but there we go. We've now got the webdav uh, demo dot uh, uh, folder created. Uh, so in here, so we could create folders. So let's say um, this is the test from um, Mac OS. So we can create that. Now, as soon as I've created that, if I go and check the native file browser on the QNAP itself and go look in my public folder, uh, we can see that the test from Mac OS is there. So I haven't had to use any built-in native QNAP software. No QSync was happening with that. Um, it's just right there. And we've now got the folder path just mounted uh, so that we can browse to it very easily from anywhere. Um, if I was to now switch over to a Windows virtual machine that I've got here, it's the same type of process, uh, but on this one you open up your file explorer and you just right click on this PC. So this is Windows 10, but you just right click on this PC and there's an option there all on its own called add a network location. So you take that, you go next, you choose a custom network location, it's the only option. Click next and now we have to type in that same path, so HTTPS, I've already typed it there from earlier. So we can just type in that exact same path uh, that we typed in on the Mac. It's universal, whether it's Mac or Windows, the path is the same. Um, and then you just click Next. So it says to type in a name for the network connection. I think it's remembered the password from when I connected earlier, but it would normally have asked you for a password there. So we can say uh, QNAP uh, WebDAV, let's say. Click Next. Open this network location when I finish. So there we go, I've got it. There's the test from macOS. So I could go in here and create a folder that says uh, test from Windows, let's say. So with the test from Windows, if we go back to the QNAP file station and do a quick refresh on that, we can see we've got the test from Windows, test from macOS. And if I was to come out of the folder um, and back in, there we go, we can see we've got test from Windows automatically appearing on the Mac. And the test from Mac OS is there already as well, uh, so that the Windows user can see it. Um, so this is all built into um, pretty much every OS that's out there, especially Windows and Mac OS, um, so that you can mount the shares um, so that they've got a path that's not a LAN IP address. So you notice that I type the path of my remote QNAP name. So that should work whether you're in the network or not. Um, if your router does not support a feature called NAT loopback, it may not work with the public address uh, when you're in the network. So if you if you find that you're trying this and you cannot make it work with the public path, but it works with the LAN IP address, let's say, um, it could be that your router does not allow you to go out of itself and back straight in again using the outside path. Um, some lower cost uh, routers don't allow that feature. There might be a tick box to enable it. Um, it might be called different things on different routers, but I think the technical terminology is, is NAT loopback. So network address translation loopback. So you're going out and back in again. Uh, so hopefully you found that very useful. Um, it's a really great way to do um, uh, different ways of working on the QNAP and data that's on it. Um, as I say, it works. There'll be no change uh, to your setup, whether you're in the office or out the office. Um, it just works a little bit slower when you're out the office because you're now limited by internet traffic speeds rather than your local LAN speeds. Um, but it's a really, really good way for you to be able to remote work on files. So if there was Excel spreadsheets here, it's just a case of double clicking them in your web dev path here. You would just double click the file, it opens in Excel, edit it. As soon as you click save, it's back up there. Um, if a Windows user was trying to open the file the same time that the Mac OS user was in the file, Microsoft will tell you, oh, sorry, somebody's already in that file. Do you want to be notified when they're out? It's all built in and native within the within the OS. Um, and here over on the, um, the Windows machine here, if we go to this PC, we'll see that we've now got that new network location down there. So it's not quite like a, a mapped network drive, 
um, but it is down there as an option that's available um, if you want to connect to it as well. Okay, uh, so that's NAT loopback and it's a feature within the web server of the QNAP. You just have to come in here and enable it. Uh, there's no cost, no charge, very easy to set up. Um, so yeah, um, thanks a lot for watching. Um, if anybody does have any questions, uh, please ask them below. We're pretty quick at responding and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Thanks very much. Bye.